I really appreciate people, uh, you know, although the room is not full, I appreciate people who uh, stayed until the end. I hope you learned something useful throughout the day. Um, NDN is still, uh, I think, in its early stage. Uh, I think after seven years, we are at the end of the beginning. Um, so th it's still a long, long way to go, not just the implementations, but also in terms of the architecture design. We need to uh, uh, move forward um, to get it mature and uh, solving real problems. Uh, I don't know, should we uh, like go around the table to see if anyone has some comments to uh, leave to us? Any suggestions or questions? Uh, especially for people who do not know, who didn't know Indian well before you came here, uh, whether you know, you get a you get a, a pair of a fresh eyes. Um, maybe you have some questions or anything. Anyone? Um, I think in, so. The question mainly about the relation between NDN and the semantic web. I think. Knowledge it's a knowledge, so, so one comment saying that the semantic web is really knowledge graph. I don't know, Jeff, you want to give us some comment? You probably know more than this. I spent some time studying the semantic, I would say they're unrelated. With the semantic web, you um, have a knowledge graph represented inside a, an RDF file, like an XML RDF file. Ontology. Yeah, an ontology. So you could use NDN to download the ontology. It is possibly related because it's possible for one ontology uh, to have what's called a named graph. You can refer to another graph. Right now, of course, it refers to the other graph using a um, sort of a HTTP type URL. You can, you can see uh, referring to the uh, another named graph with an NDN name, but it's kind of a different layer. You basically you you might use NDN to download the XML file that represents the graph. And I think anywhere where you have hierarchically structured data, you might be able to take advantage of NDN for the networking part, even though they're kind of a different, kind of they're, they're really a different layer. Like, yeah. you know, so the, the database library, uh, does it have a similarity to the knowledge-based Not, not really. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, no. Uh, when we talk about the libraries, it's really libraries to help you build the applications. Okay. Um, yeah. So Probably can comment on that. Huh? Uh, because I, I, I believe we what, what she just said got the idea because I thought that, that uh, in the morning when I listening when I was listening to uh, uh, Vance uh, talk, uh, I saw the world of semantic uh, networking. I I, I was uh, generating some 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 like words because uh, Van was uh, emphasizing answer a question we found the answer from the network, right? But the, the knowledge graph is more like a search engine, like a, like a smart search engine. So like, I also saw this a similar idea. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, I'm a network person, so I do not know a lot about semantic web. But I'm from, for me, like, you know, 3,000 feet moved away from a semantic web this is what I, my understanding of the situation. I think for applications, it's all about semantics, the relations between different uh, objects, different entities. But up to this point, those things only stay at the high level, at the application level. It works all fine if you assume you have a perfectly connected world with infinite bandwidth with zero delay. And so therefore, you can have all the semantic connections or, or um, manipulations as you wish you have. But in reality, um, the world is not connected by infinite bandwidth to every node and with zero delays. Especially today, um, as the edge devices become the more and more powerful. Like my phone you know, had 64 gigabytes. And you know, um, Bitran mentioned earlier today when he went to a cruise um, trip. 
Among the friends, they all have phones. They should be able to just uh, use the social web as they wish. But today's uh, underlying network technology block you from all these semantic um, uh, applications. So NDN is really trying to uh, get rid of this kind of one level of interaction. For now, application communicate at the application level using application terminologies. And for the network, they have their own names, which is the IP addresses. And you further down, there's the link layer addresses. So for the semantic entities to have a query and a reply, you have to do few levels of translation before you can get uh, your packet flow. Not only that, it requires you are connected all the time so that you can actually communicate. Because IP has this always on model. Everyone is always connected. When you're not, IP does not work. So that's why for many years now, people uh, developed this entire separate branch of networking called uh, delayed tolerant networking. And that works in an entirely different way. It still doesn't have a very good solution. So in NDN, at the basic size, let's get rid of this layer of address, which doesn't help application. It does not. So we can just use application names to communicate. And this enables you to, for one, get rid of there's a few layers of name translation to addresses, to Macs, and other things. And the second is that uh, because you are talking about directly the objects, you know, semantically meaningful objects you want to get. And therefore, it doesn't mandate that you are connected all the time. Instead, whenever you have the option to grab the objects you want, you can. Uh, so it's, it's I think for that, uh, I think I would agree with Jeff, saying that um, NDN really enables enables applications that's a semantic uh, reach to have resilient uh, communications to help you with develop the application. Uh, but uh, up to this point, the semantic web only stayed at the application level. 